Next, we need to talk about vertical and horizontal compression or stretch. So remember that when we were looking at vertical shift, we were adding a constant to our function, right? It was on the outside of our function. So we're gonna have a vertical compression or a vertical stretch if we take a constant A and we multiply it by our function. So a vertical compression by a factor of A is if you have a number between um, zero and one. So this D right here, this would be a vertical compression. See, we had our original parent function, which is f of x equals x squared, and we're compressing it vertically. We're kind of pushing it down towards the um, x-axis. I'm going to have a vertical stretch if I take my function and I multiply it by a constant greater than one. That's when we have a vertical stretch. So here we have a vertical stretch. That's when we have this function C right here. We kind of stretched it. Its, it's x values are going quickly, but not as quickly as if it was inside the parentheses. Um, that would be a horizontal stretch. So let's take a look at that. So remember that when we were looking at the horizontal shifts of functions, what we were doing was we were putting or adding and subtracting a constant inside our argument. So for a horizontal stretch or compression, we're putting that constant inside our argument, inside our x. So if I have an a value between 0 and 1, that's going to give us a horizontal stretch factor, right? We're growing more quickly uh, uh, in the horizontal direction. That would be this one right here. See, it kind of pushed my graph down towards the x-axis. And if I have a horizontal compression, that means I'm growing faster vertically than I am horizontally, right? And that's going to be this one right here where we put this 2. That's a horizontal compression. So a few things to keep in mind. Another thing I want to point out is about the reflection across the y and x axis. So here I have a reflection across the y axis, and here I have a reflection across the x axis. So if I'm going to be reflecting about the x axis, I'm going to take y equals negative f of x. That takes my y values and makes them negative. So here we have our reflection about the x axis. If I had a y value of 1, that y value now becomes negative 1. See here I had the point when x was 1, y was 1, positive 1. Now I have when x is 1, y is negative 1, right? That's going to slip my value from negative to positive. So it's on the outside of our argument, right? When things are on the outside of our argument, it affects us vertically. So we're flipping across the y-axis, which affects the vertical values. If I want to reflect across the y-axis, that's y equals f of negative x. We have seen this before. This is an even function, right? Functions are even if they um, are symmetrical across the y-axis. So here I have a graph of our y-axis. This means y equals f of negative x. So here, if I have when x is 1, y is 1, I'm going to get that when x is negative 1, y is still 1. So that's how we reflect across the y-axis. Here they are all, are, all are put together as a table. It's a little bit cut off. I apologize about that, but this is y equals f of negative x. And you are able to download this from the class website. It is on our Blackboard. So here's a nice little shortcut table for us. So let's go ahead and graph the problem following and discuss what's going on. So I have my parent function was a parabola. This is going to look like a parabola. We've got a shift up 4, a shift left 3, and this because it's on the outside, that is a vertical stretch. and it's reflected across the x-axis. So let's see how this goes. I'm going to draw my parent function. I'm going to draw my parent function in blue. Here's our lovely little parabola. 
He's so cute. So I've got y equals x squared. Now I know that this function shifted my graph up four. So up one, two, three, one, two, three, four, okay. And then it shifted it to the left three, one, two, three. So here's gonna be my new vertex. I know my graph is flipped in across the x-axis, so it's gonna be upside down. Uh, let's go ahead and find some of our values. So I have when x is negative three, negative four, and negative two. Remember that it's gonna be symmetrical through our vertex, right? This is where it switches from looking like a decreasing function to an increasing function uh, at the origin. This is gonna be a little different because it is flipped upside down. So I have when x is negative four, I have negative two times negative four plus three squared plus four. That gives me um, negative one squared, which is one times negative two, which is negative two plus four, which is two. When x is negative three, I've got negative two times negative three plus three squared, which gives me zero. So my answer is gonna be four. And this is symmetrical, so I'm gonna have two. Let's go ahead and graph these points. When x is negative four, y is two. When x is negative three, y is two. Here's our beautiful little parabola that we have found. So here's our new parabola. After we take the parent function, we flip it, we stretch it, we shift it, and we move it to the left. Next I have 2x squared minus 2. This is going to be shifted up, oh, down 2. And then this isn't shifted to the left or right at all, but it does have a horizontal compression. That's what we call this, a horizontal compression. So we have our parent function. We shifted it down to, so here is our parent function, right? Our lovely little parabola. And then we're gonna shift it down to, we'll graph this in green, go down one, two. So here's my new vertex. It's not flipped it or rotated at all. So we're gonna look at when x is negative one, zero and one. So two times negative one squared is gonna be four minus two, which is two, zero, squared minus two is a negative two. We already have that point. And because this is symmetrical, this will also be a two. So as you can see, I shifted everything down. And x is one, y is two. Ch -ch -ch. Ch -ch -ch. I don't know why I graphed those there. So we have our new graph of our parabola. We couldn't just shift everything down because there was that horizontal compression. Last but not least, let's take a look at the following. I have f of x equals negative one half square root of x plus one. So this just shifted left one. And then we have a vertical compression because we're multiplying by uh, our function by a fraction, a is less than one. And then this is also shifted across the x-axis. So let's take a look at our parent function in orange. Here's the parent function, square root of x. Let's graph our new guy. Now we know he shifted to the left one. So that's gonna be where my graph starts. So I'm gonna look at when x is negative two, negative one, and zero. So I have negative one half square root of negative two plus one. Well, I can't do that, right? Because then I'd be taking the square root of a negative. So oops, my bad, don't pick a point. <laughs> to the left, let's look at when x is zero and x is one. Um, typically on the parabola, you wanna pick one point on either side, but because the radical, you can't take the square root of a negative. That was my bad. Everybody makes mistakes. Okay, so negative one half, square root of negative one plus one, that's gonna be zero. We already have this point when x is negative one, y is zero. When x is zero, we're gonna have negative one half square root of one, which is just negative one half. So right there. And when x is one, I've got negative one half square root of two. Well, that's not a really nice number to graph. But if I had when x was three, I'd have negative one half 
square root of 3 plus 1, which would give us negative 1 half times 2, which is negative 1. So when x is 3, y is a negative 1. So here is our shifted, reflected, and vertically compressed radical. Again, we've got the um, summary table of all the shifts, so you can take a look at them. Friendly reminder that there is a worksheet for this section. I did post it on the class website, but I didn't print it out um, because in class we played a Kahoot. <laughs>